Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Kalsoom Javed from Department of Dermatology, DHQ Hospital, Faisalabad. And as we are all well versed with the standard Botox for facial expression lines, quite uh, discussed in very detail by my worthy colleagues, I'll now be moving towards some other useful aspects of Botox, uh, which are different from that. Uh, I, my presentation will comprise of microbotox and the Botox for palm, uh, hyperhidrosis, like for axillary and palmoplantar. Microbotox, how did the idea came was due to the observation by dermatologists like that the patient, what does the patient want? It's just a smooth forehead and not the one uh, and the one which is still able to move and elevate naturally. Uh, it's a useful and versatile chemo resurfacing technique which helps to improve sheen and texture of skin. It decreases oil, sweat and sebum production. It improves acne, reduces the appearance of open pores. It decreases the fine lines without uh, altering the deep muscle movements. It lifts and sculpts the jawline and it improves the scars, smoothens the neck and generally gives a natural appearance to the face without an over Botox look. And it also uh, has been uh, used experimentally in the improvement of keloids in conjunction with intralegional time cinerolone and So uh, microbotox was also called mesobotox because of the similarity of the injection techniques because it's, it was also being, uh, it's also being injected at the uh, subdermally, the same site as used in mesotherapy. What does it do? In muscle, it does weak, uh, weaken the superficial layer of the muscles only without compromising the deeper muscles activity. It decreases the fine lines and wrinkles and in the difficult to treat areas like uh, lateral forehead, under eye areas and neck and jawline. While in skin, it decreases the production of uh, sweat, sebaceous secretions and it causes uh, shrinkage of sweat and sebaceous glands. So uh, by, by its action on cholinergic and adrenergic receptors. So it leads to tightening of the skin and well pores are reduced, skin is smooth, unlined and the acne gets improved. Uh, reduction of sebaceous secretion helps to control acne but more importantly it makes the open pores appear smaller and less in number and skin feels defined with a smooth shape. So it's quite suitable for forehead, T-zone, cheeks, under eye areas, uh, the neck and jawline. <clears throat> Let me compare it with the uh, uh, standard Botox, which we have learned earlier. What does the standard Botox do? In standard Botox, we uh, inject slightly larger volume, slightly larger amount of bot botulinum toxin into the deeper layer of the muscles. While in microbotox, we inject smaller volume and smaller amount at the junction of uh, dermis and superficial layer of the muscles. So they act on their respective sites and uh, the color highlights the, uh, its functions. And in standard botox, it leads to paralysis of the deeper layer of the muscles, while in uh, microbotox, it only paralyzes or relaxes the superficial layer of the muscles and uh, greater actions on the skin, uh, which are very less with. Here are the final effects, complete paralysis of the deeper muscle while lesser effects on the skin but with microbotox paralysis of only superficial layer of the muscles with uh, more effects on the skin. So um, the procedure, standard bottle of botox is prepared with 2.5 ml of saline in which each 1 ml contains uh, 40 units. So each 0.1 ml contains 4, four units. In the same methodology which was discussed earlier by Dr. Saira. Uh, but from now the procedure differs. We have to take 24 units as uh, just for example for forehead we need 24 units. So we take 0.6 ml of the solution in a, from a, a standard Botox and we aspirate uh, 0.4 ml of normal saline in it. Does make 24 units of Botox in 1 ml of normal saline. So each 1 ml of syringe of microbotox solution may contain 20 to 28 units as is preferred by our choice. Uh, per ml of the solution and is used to deliver 100 to 120 injections, very smaller amount of injections, like uh, 10 to 15 droplets even with 0 0.05 ml. The injections are delivered intradermally using a 30 or 32 gauge needle, raising just a tiny blanched wheel at each point. For forehead, uh, you have to use 24 to 28 units in 1 ml of saline, inject at uh, more than 40 points and they, each point should raise a small whitish black. If it does not, then it's 
for infraorbital and nasal body lines, uh, just 8 to 12 units are sufficient, and you have to disperse it at more than 25 points, but being very superficial. For neck and jawline, starting with two finger breadths above the jawline, uh, moving down towards the clavicle, up till the thyroid cartilage, avoiding the sterdocledomastoid or very little amount over it, and also avoiding uh, being two finger breadths uh, away from uh, angle of mouth to prevent its effects on orbicularis or his muscle. For nose and cheeks, uh, 20 units in one ml normal saline sufficient. So the key points to be uh, revised. It's basically an intradermal or subdermal injection of very diluted botulinum toxin to affect the sweat and sebaceous glands and is very, in very superficial layer of the facial muscles. It needs very careful preparation of the solution and it's a sensitive with a sensitive and defined injection technique. You don't have to inject too deep to cause deep muscle paralysis. Now, uh, the second part of my presentation, Botox for hyperhidrosis. Start with, uh, let's discuss some uh, basic points about sweating. Just a normal physiological response to increase body temperature. It's an important mechanism for releasing heat and is control controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. Muscarinic uh, receptors on clear cells of eccrine glands are activated by acetylcholine from postganglionic neurons, stimulating the swelled release, and that is the basic uh, mechanism of its action uh, because of Botox. Eccrine glands are uh, usually distributed in the skin and they're uh, unequally distributed in the skin. They're a higher concentration in the areas like palms, soles, and forehead. Uh, they are located at the junction of dermis and subcutaneous fat. They secrete a hypotonic uh, solution for thermoregulation by evaporation. Here is a table to show eccrine sweat glands area and quantity. You can say they are much more in the sole of the foot than forehead, palms, axillary thigh, and the rest few of the areas which almost have uh, none of them. Now, what is hyperhidrosis? It's just excessive sweating of uh, which is uh, beyond that necessary for physiological thermoregulation and homeostasis. Its prevalence is said to be 2.8% in common population and the trigger factors are uh, definitely emotional stress, higher temperatures and caffeine intake. The body areas most often affected are the same which have a uh, higher prevalence of uh, eccrine glands like axillary, palms, soles, craniofacial region, inframemory. Hyperhidrosis site prevalence is uh, definitely exactly the same, uh, but more in axillary, then palm, soles, face, scalp, and then groin, according to their percent. Now, the criteria to diagnose primary focal hyperhidrosis, because uh, we have to focus on, prim on primary focal hyperhidrosis after excluding the secondary causes of hyperhidrosis. The criteria, I, I'll, be, I'll be discussing those secondary causes uh, later on. The criteria is focal visible excessive sweating of at least six months duration with no apparent secondary cause and at least two of the following characters. It should be bilateral and relatively symmetric. Age of onset must be less than 25 years. There must be, there may be a positive family history. Cessation of focal sweating occurs during sleep. Uh, frequency of episodes at least once in a week and it does impair the activities. So how to assess the hyperidosis as it does affect the patient's quality of life being on psychological, social, and occupational aspects. So here is a very simple hyperidosis disease severity score, which needs just a single question, which best describes the impact of sweating on your daily activity. Just an office question, and it will score, the patient will rate it in the five in the four scores from one to four, and with three to four corresponding to uncontrolled swear hyperhidrosis, which is intolerable and mostly interferes with his daily. Therapies used for hyperhidrosis in general to be to started with uh, antiperspirants, botulinum toxin A and B, and autophoresis, oral medications, local excision of eccrine glands, liposuction, and or curettage, endoscopic thoracic sympathy. Uh, now I'll be discussing axillary hyperhidrosis. Starting with it, uh, to assess the extent of the disease, how do we assess it? For it, we use iodine starch test. Iodine is applied to the clean, dry surface. It must be dry. The sweat must be dried first. Then iodine should be draped only. And after it being dried, uh, cornstarch should be spirally sprayed over it with uh, anything you uh, choose, like loose gauze, cosmetic brushes, or applied earlier. For iodine-sensitive patients, you may use alizarine or uh, poncho red dye and start or talcum powder. So the key features of success, uh, successful starch iodine test, just a revision. Uh, priorly must rule out iodine allergy. Sweat must be thoroughly dried from the skin. 
iodine in castor oil or betadine swab can simply be used. Just a layer of iodine just to have to spread it. Then it must be dried before moving on to the next step. Standard cooking uh, starch can be used very easily. Uh, and it should be sprinkled, not rubbed at all. Minimize the amount of starch will give you more accurate results. In the event of a negative or uh, equivocal result, uh, just a hair bearing skin is a good estimate of the area necessary to treat if you are unable to do it or the result is not. Contraindications for Botox prior to be ruled out like these are prior allergic reaction, injection into the area of infection or inflammation should not be done. Pregnancy, definitely in breastfeeding category C. Diseases of neuromuscular junction like uh, Mycenae gravis and Eater Lambert will be uh, aggravated by it, so there are relative contraindications. Some medications which might be patient using, uh, they decrease neuromuscular transmission and the proper drug history must be taken before it. Like uh, we have to take care about aminoglycosides, penicillamine, quinine and calcium channel blocker if the patient is. Starting with the injection technique, again, uh, it's a deep intradermal injection. Should be placed one to two centimeter apart to allow to diffusion into the entire area. Higher volume should be used that will be used to treat more areas. US standard dose for Botox is 50 units per axilla. It gives excellent results and higher patient satisfaction rate. Pain is quite minimal and the procedure does not require on most of the cases. Here is the pictorial uh, presentation. Injection points should be marked after iodine starch test, the area. Highlighted injection points should be marked and uh, they should be 1 1.5 to 2 centimeter apart to uh, have excellent coverage after medication diffusion. Depth of injection, here you can see, is a dermal subcutaneous injection uh, junction. In the axillary, a small wheel should be visualized and there may be 10 to 15 injections per according to the severity of the disease and size of the axilla that has to be treated. Afterwards, Repeat, on repeat uh, visit of the patient. If there is still some complaint about uh, residual area of hyperhidrosis, iodine starch test can be repeated in a similar manner and it may highlight any area left uh, which uh, was incompletely treated. And uh, so you can touch up the relevant area only or simply increase the unit, uh, the dose of Botox to 100 units per axillary on the next. Key features again uh, to summarize just rule out the contraindications of bottom toxin therapy at the start. Identify the involved surface area using iodine starch test. Quite necessary. Axillary pain is minimal, so anesthesia usually not required. Uh, how to reconstitute it? 100 units are available in the standard vial and they should be reconstituted with 4 ml of sterile saline. Uh, each 2 ml contains 50 units in, in this way 2 ml for one axillary and 2 ml for the other axilla. Depending on the size of axilla, about 10 to 15 injection points per axilla and injections delivered at deep dermal to superficial subcutaneous. Side effects which may encounter simply pain, hematoma, bruising, headache, muscle soreness, increased facial sweating, uh, compensatory sweating, not usually encountered but may be possible. Perceived compensatory sweating, uh, axillary pruritus seen after it. To summarize it, uh, hyper, uh, hyperhidrosis disease severity scale is a validated scale that's used in selecting patients appropriate for therapy and assessing the effectiveness of treatment definitely afterwards the uh, treatment with Botox. Starch iodine test, simple colorimetric, colorimetric test detected, uh, used to detect the presence of active sweat glands uh, and to identify the surface area involved. The in event of a negative or equivocal results, uh, the hair bearing skin is a good estimate of the area necessary to be treated. Procedure is well tolerated. It was approved by FDA in 2004 and when injected at the depth of, depth of deep dermis and subcutaneous tissue, the chemo denovation is localized, reversible and standard dose 50 units per axillary, average of 10 to 15 injections in each axillary. If symptoms, symptoms persist after the treatment, repeat start iodine test as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it will detect any area that you have missed and you can retreat it afterwards with one to two injections only. If treatment response is inadequate or short-lived, like uh, less than three months, ideally it should be about more than three or more than three months. If it is less than that, simply increase the dose to 100 units per axillary on the next visit. Retreatment with bottom toxin A will average, uh, on average, be you will be needing it at six to seven months, but it can vary on uh, depending on the patient's response. Now moving on towards palmar plantar hyperhidrosis, again very distressing for the patients who do have it. 
to assess it we again use hyperdosis disease severity scale um, from mild moderate severe causes of secondary hyperdosis which must be ruled out in every patient who presents to you like febrile illnesses endocrine or metabolic conditions thyroid dysfunctions diabetes menopause neurological disorders parkinsons uh, cardiovascular disorders respiratory disorders some medications substance abuse neoplastic diseases anxiety stress again the same criteria just for repetition uh, criteria for diagnosis of primary focal hyperhidrosis focal visible excessive sweating of at least 6 months duration with no apparent or secondary cause and at least two of the following there are bilateral and relatively symmetric age is age at onset should be maybe less than 25 years with a positive family history cessation of focal sweating during sleep frequency of at least one episode per week and it does impair the daily activities which we will assess with the hyperhidrosis disease severity scale Treatment options again: topical aluminium chloride, oral glycopyrrolate, then botulinum toxin, inotropheresis, microwave thermolysis, systemic drugs like anticholinergics, propranolol, clonidine, deltaism, and the lastly, endoscopic thoracic sympathectomy. Procedure: Patient should discontinue any topical therapies five days prior to iodine start testing because these patients uh, would have been usually prescribed the first line therapy. They should stop it five days prior to the iodine starch test that should be conducted in this uh, exactly the similar manner which i discussed earlier then how to prepare the botox vial again having 100 units but pre uh, do prepare it with 3 ml of saline in this way each 0.1 ml will contain 3.3 units of botox since palmar plantar skin is thick needles dull out more quickly uh, after serial injections therefore it's best to draw the uh, draw up these 100 units into uh, Six syringes of 0.5 ml, as you have it as 3 ml. So injection pattern on the palms and digits like three injections per fingertip and two injections at each uh, middle and proximal phalanx, and then the whole area in a grid-like pattern, spaced one to 1.5. Injection technique, proper injection depth for palm and sole is very important. It's at the junction of dermis and subcutaneous tissue, which is the location of eccrine glands. The needle should be inserted at an oblique angle and product placed into the deeper dermis. Small zone of blanching does occur. It's not that exactly the wheel which we observed in other parts of the body because of the change in this uh, difference in the skin type. Then, approximately 50 to 100 units of Botox is the standard dose for each palm, depending on the size of the area. But for sole, for each sole, you need 100 units. Uh, for results and follow up some degree of hand weakness uh, may, will be seen may be seen 24 to 72 hours after the injection they can persist up to 2 weeks so you have to counsel your patients beforehand hand grip strength is usually retained but the thumb index finger pinch strength is weakened in some cases for patients who are in profession they require fine hand movements and strength we recommend treating uh, one hand at the uh, at a moment and then deferring the other hand procedure at a later visit pain and soreness are common they can last up to 2 days just in count uh, counsel your patient about that small hematomas paresthesias numbness may encounter they are uncommon and transient but good thing is that they are transient so patient can be easily counseled for it follow up is to be done at 5 months to plan for a revisit or touch a uh, retreatment which may be needed at 6 to 7 months. here uh, the procedure again iodine starch test to detect the residual area which uh, highlighted some areas which are which were left uh, undertreated and that can be retreated with again was it anesthesia techniques for palmar or plantar injections are important because it's not that like exit procedure that goes uh, that can be proceeded without any anesthesia technique for palms and soles you can use topical anesthesia in the form of amla nerve blocks i'll discuss later Cryoanalysia very important. Well, it can be done with dichloronitro or uh, tetrafluoroethane, liquid nitrogen spray, ice cubes, ice packs, cold packs, and machine-assisted cold air. Vibration can be used. IV regional anesthesia. Byers block is a very technically difficult and uh, not that good technique with a lot of risks. General anesthesia or sedation as a last. Nerve blocks. Effective and office procedures are generally these are effective and office procedures. As you, you all know, there are three nerves. uh to supply for the palm radial median and ulnar they 
these three can be blocked at the wrist with uh, 1 to 2 percent xylocaine, uh, 1 to 2 percent lidocaine. 2 cc of it can be injected in the vicinity of the nerve, not into the nerve. 20 minutes are needed after this injection for its full effect to be seen. Risks are there. There may be infiltration of nerve, which can lead to injury of the nerve. Vascular puncture may be there and temporary hand weakness. So always be very careful. Draw back the needle if the patient complains of unusual tingling during Differences from uh, differences of technique at palmoplantar site from axillary region. It is more painful because of higher density of nerve receptors. It gives less sweat-free interval after the procedure because of different recovery rate of the neuro nerves in the hands. Backflow is definitely a bigger problem because of the type of the skin, stratum lucidum. We do encounter backflow. Side effects uh, as a whole, bruising, weakness, numbness, tingling, mild discomfort, atrophy of the muscle of the hands in the long run, not just with a single procedure. In the long run, when it diffuses deeper into the muscles of the hand, it may lead to atrophy and weakness. Risks of nerve blocks, as I discussed earlier, pain and hematoma, which are more encountered at the soles, they must be taken care. Now, how to prevent backflow of neurotoxin during the palmoplantar injection? Ensure that there are no air bubbles in the syringe. Uh, keep the bevel of the needle up. Try to keep the angle of the needle as parallel as possible to the skin surface, not to be uh, perpendicular. Try to keep the angle of the needle as parallel. Uh, advance the needle to a millimeter prior to injection. Inject slowly. Do not insert the needle into the skin with uh, pressure on the plunger. Very important. Wait for one to two seconds after you have injected and then uh, withdraw the needle back to allow the time for normalization. Of Summarize it, botulinum toxin A can produce hypohidrosis of palms and soles for up to six months. Icing or cooling devices are preferred in well-tolerated modes of anesthesia for hands. Our regional nerve blocks can be recommended, should be recommended prior to plantar injections. Injections should be spaced 1 to 1.5 cm apart with 2 to 3 units of botulinum toxin A per injection site on the average. Success rate reaches 90% for palmar injections, but it is quite variable for plantar hyperhidrosis. Some weakness of thumb, thumb, index finger, pinch strength may occur, which returns after 2 to 3 weeks. So take care of it. If injections are placed superficially and spaced properly, most of them will not be. So thanks a lot. That was all. Any questions?